we got to be right. We got to be holy. Amen. If we want to make it into the kingdom of God, we got to obey all his mysteries, all his statutes, all his commandments. We must be what? A real people. We must be holy. Amen. And I thank Abi Yahweh. I thank the apostle for their wonderful words. Amen. They were giving it to her. Amen. I thank the Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and do uh, Galatians. Amen. Chapter 3. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. And today's subject is the saints are all one in the Messiah. Amen. The saints. I'm talking about the hypocrites. The saints. The saints. Those that are walking upright. Those that are walking holy. Walking the up in the world. Not, not doing evil. Not doing wickedness. Being obedient to the commandments of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMasek. Then we're one with Him when we do that. We cannot be one with the Lord if we're not obeying Him. Amen. If you're, if you're committing fornication, adultery, lying, Amen. stealing, or going against any of His mystical statutes or laws, or you're doing things according to your perspective instead of the perspective of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Yeshua, then... Uh, you're not one. Amen. And, and in other words, we got to be one as in the Torah, as the Torah has said, as the Word of God speaks, we must be one. We must be in total agreement with God's Word. Amen. I right, thank the Lord. Amen. I'll be our way. We come before you, most holy Father. We say thank you. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for your truth, Father. Thank you for how you use the Apostle, Father. Oh, Father, we just praise you and glorify you, Father, for the wonderful words, the warnings that you give us, Father, the pathways that you show us, Father, the doors that you open for us. Oh, Father, we thank you for the doors that you even close for us, God, Yahweh. We just praise you. Oh, Father, help us lift you up and praise you and glorify your most wonderful name at all times. Help us always be found being obedient to that word and to that truth, Lord. And Lord, we know that your word is blessed, but we ask you to bless us with understanding and more so, Father, with the obedient, obedient to that word and that truth. We thank you, Father, for the apostles, the members, the congregation. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing, dear Lord. In the holy name of Yeshua, I would say, would you say, Amen and Amen. And be a Galatians uh, 3 on page 1454. Okay, Galatians 3, page 1454. Amen. And the saints, the saints are all one in the Messiah. Amen. We are saints are one in the Messiah. Amen. Amen. But he starts off here. <coughs> she starts off here. It's all right. You stupid Galatians. Notice what he says. You stupid Galatians. In other words, God called people stupid. They did not obey the word of God. Saying he's stupid. We're stupid then. We don't obey Torah. We don't line up the word of God. Then we're, we're stupid. We allow somebody else to change our, our, our thoughts on how we serve God or, or how we view God. I'm talking about if we already stand on the word of God and then we come off the word of God to go a different way, go in a different direction, then he says, we're stupid. We are stupid people then. Amen. Amen. We're, we're no longer ignorant, but we're stupid. stupid because we have the word, we know the truth, and yet we won't obey it. That's being stupid. You know, you know what to do what is righteous. You know what to do that is reactive. You know what to do what is holy. And you won't do it. That's stupid. You turn your back. You, you turn your back on your shoe. You turn your back on our be our way. That's stupid. Amen. You go in a different direction. You sell out for silver and gold. That's stupid. Or for money, filthy lucre. That that that's stupid. Amen. Amen. You, you, you have a wife. You go out there and cheat. That, uh, you commit adultery. That's stupid. Amen. That's stupid. You have a hug, you go out there and cheat, that's stupid. 
in any type of thing that we do that disobeys the commandments, the statutes, the misfits of our Lord is what stupid. He says, who has what put you under a spell? And then the King James he says, uh, you foolish Galatians, who has what bewitched you? you. Amen. Now we got to remember that Yeshua said, hey, God said, I, I suffer not a witch not to live. That's the word. Amen. Which is put a spell. Who has put a spell on you that you won't obey the word? That you turn your back on God? No. See, Satan, that's what he does. He comes what, to kill, steal, and destroy. He's stolen what? Who has stolen your vision? Who has stolen your love from God? For God? When we find ourselves, we don't want to serve our Yahweh. We don't want to serve the Lord. We don't want to be righteous. We don't want to be holy. When we let the cares of this world carry us away, carry us off, then that's being stupid. And see, we're coming to a point now that we must stand on this holy world. Because people are going to be coming, the demons are coming, to what? Get us off this word of God. Amen. So that we won't stand. They want to push us over. Amen. They want us to succumb to their way of thinking. They want us to accept homosexuality. They want us to uh, uh, accept killing uh, of innocent babies. All right. They want to dress in the way of the world. They want to dress nakedly. They want to walk around naked and want to still call themselves saints of God. They want to put tattoos on their bodies and call themselves saints of God. Can't do this, people. See, we got to go word by word, line by line, and precept upon precept in this holy word. Amen. If we're not doing that, then we're not going to make it to the kingdom of God. Amen. We have been deceived, amen? And we cannot be one, we cannot be a saint, nor can we be one with the Messiah. Because why? We have differentiated. We have changed. We have become different than what... Torah has said that we're supposed to be. So therefore we can't be one. In order to be one with Messiah, with the Messiah, then we gotta do just as he says, including obeying the Seventh day Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Including obeying the Seventh day Sabbath. And in other words, we got to obey all of God's Torah. Yes. Amen. He says before your very eyes, Yeshua the Messiah was clearly betrayed as having been put to death as a criminal. I want to know from you just this one thing. Did you receive the Spirit by legalistic observance of Torah's commands or by trusting in what you heard and being faithful to it? Say, how, did, how are you living? How are you living? Mm -hmm. How are you living in reality? How have you come to a decision? Huh? Are you just doing it for a legalistic word or are you doing it in the spirit? Come on. Huh? Or are you doing it in the spirit? Are you living in the spirit? Are you going by the spirit? Are you letting the, the spirit direct your path, order your steps? Are you allowing the reality to enter into you and order your steps? See, we got our stuff's got to be ordered by reality. Amen. And we got to want to be obedient to the Word of God. Yes. You know, we got to show God, you're sure that we love Him and we love Him by being obedient to His commandment. That's it. Amen. Not just by legalistic, amen, means, oh, I'm just doing this because Torah says I got to do it. Because you love it. We do it because of what we love. Yes. Amen. We have to do it because of our love for Abba Yahweh. Yes. Now, if we don't love him, and we're just doing it for legalistic purposes, then that means that we don't have the reactions, we don't have the Spirit of God in us, and if we don't have the Spirit of God in us, we cannot be none of his. 
Amen. No man can see his face. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to have the react, got to have the Holy Spirit, and we got to allow the Holy Spirit to react to lead us and to guide us in all of his truths. Yes. Because if we're not allowing the react to lead us and guide us, then we're not gonna be obedient to all of his truths because we're not gonna know all of his truths. That's right. We're not gonna recognize it. Thank you, Abby Amen. He says, Are you that stupid? Having begun with the Spirit's power, do you think you can reach the goal under your own power? Say, are you that stupid? Really? You know, know that we have to get the Riyadh Hagadash, in other words, be baptized in the Holy Spirit in the Riyadh. Yes, Lord. You know, now we all of a sudden, we think that with all of this and all of that, that we don't need the power of the Riyadh. We don't need the power of the Holy Ghost. I know. That we can just go ahead on and do as we think, being led by our own understanding. And if, are we that stupid? To think that we have that type of wisdom, that we have that type of knowledge, that we don't need the power of Yeshua HaMaseya? My Lord, Jesus. He said, are you that stupid? See? That you think that you can even get yourself up in the morning, you can't even put yourself to sleep at night? Hallelujah. Can't do that. Are you that stupid in thinking that you don't need the Holy Spirit, no, no. the Holy Ghost? See? And we're telling us to examine ourselves now. So, because we got to live this word what, in the right motive, in the right manner. Yes, Lord. Amen. We got to be a righteous people. We got to be a react people. It's a must. Lord. We must walk line by line and precept upon precept. Yes. By every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And that's how our salvation comes by trusting in the words of Yeshua. How we say, trusting in the words of our Yahweh. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. If we don't have that trust, if we don't have that faith, then we're nothing. We're not going to make it. Hallelujah. And if we lack faith, if we lack trust, we need to be begging Yeshua HaMaseya to give us that trust, to give us that faith, to increase our faith, to increase our belief. Because, see, it's all of Yeshua or nothing. There's no partiality. 99 and a half just ain't going to do it. Amen. See, we got to go the whole way. We got to talk the whole line. We got to eat the whole oh, roll. Come on. This is a must. You know, there's no such thing as an almost saint. Well, I'm almost there, except, you know, I do this and I do that and I do this. Well, no, we got to get help. Amen. We got to ask Riyadh. We got to ask the shooter to come in to and deliver us and save us and cleanse us and purge us. Because yes. when we go before that throne, we got to go before him perfectly without spot, without wrinkle, and without blemish. Innocent. Yes, See? Lord. If we got to come before the Lord, Glory. you know, with a pure heart, a pure mind, and a pure soul, this a must. Yes. If we're going before him any other kind of way, then it's not, it's not, it's not uh, happening. No, sir. If we're not going to make it in, we end up in that burning fire and that that. Eternal hell, the a fire, a brimstone. And I'm gonna let you know, people, hell is not for us. Hell Hallelujah. is not designed for us. Amen. You don't want to go there. No, no. Amen. Even the adversary doesn't want to be there. No, sir. He wants to be out of there. He don't want to go. That's why. Hey, he's mad. He's angry. Since he knows he has to go, because he cannot get back into the kingdom of God, he cannot get back into the kingdom of heaven. So he's got to uh, uh, dwell in hell forever and ever. And he knows this. Yes, he does. And that's why he wants to take as many people as he possibly can, as much of mankind as he possibly can. Amen. That's why he, he, put, he gives you the temptations, the things that you think that you want, you know, you're killed for money, drugs, sex. You're killed to have your way. Where do you think these spirits come from? These are not the spirits of our Lord and Savior. These are not the spirits of God. 
These are the spirits of Satan, the demon. As is that. The evil ones. Amen. Thank you, Abby Yahweh. He says, Have you suffered so much for nothing? If that's the way you think, your suffering certainly will have you what would have been for nothing. If you think that you can go ahead on after going through the baptism, after giving up your life, and God put, giving you the Riyadh HaKadosh, now you think that you can do on your own power that your suffering has been for nothing. Amen. And if you can't make it to the kingdom of God, you will end up going to that burning hell. See, he trying to tell us, he's trying to wake us up by calling us stupid when we do such things, and try to wake us up out of that stupor, and to become obedient children of God. To get back in the program of obeying Yeshua. Amen. Stop the stupidness of your ways. He says, what about God? who supplies you with the Spirit and works miracle among you. Does he do it because he illegalistic observes the Torah's command or because you trust in what you've heard and are faithful to it? He asks him, what, what are you being faithful for? Are you being faithful to a legalistic terms or are you being faithful to the Spirit of Yeshua HaMaseah? See, we have to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. See, our trust has got to be in Yeshua. Hallelujah. Well, we know the words are pure, mm -hmm. but it's not from a legalist. It's got to be in the spirit. Yes. He said, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and, and in truth. truth. See, and in truth. Yes. See, if we try to worship him in any other kind of ways, right. then... We're in error. Amen. Oh, I just, I have to. I got to. And you're mad and you're angry. You don't have the love. You know. Oh, you know, you see a lot of people mad because they can't watch their football games and sports on Saturday. Not, not, not if you being uh, holy. You know. You can watch them after Shabbat. Amen. Amen. But not on Shabbat. We got to understand that we, we're serving Yeshua. Amen. This is His day. Yes. This is His day. Amen. This is the day that He's commanded us to keep. He told us to remember the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. To keep it holy. Yes, He did. That's His word. Amen. And we should find a joy in being obedient to keeping God's word. Amen. Amen. I'd be glad to see the Shabbat roll in. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so happy when it comes in. I just don't know what to do. Amen. I find it a joy yes, it to obey all His statutes and His commandments. You know, it's like a child wants to please his parent. You know, a child is trying to please his parent, and the parent is pleased by what the child does. Everybody gets joy out of it. The parent gets joy, the child gets joy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what? You don't please the parent. Yeah. And the parent gets joy because the child has pleased them. Amen. Well, it's the same way with Yeshua HaMasseh, up on a higher scale. Yes. We should get joy because we're pleasing Abu Yahweh. And I'll be out and get joy because we're trying to please him. We're, we're pleasing him. Amen. When we're being obedient. Amen. It makes him happy. And I don't know about you, but I want you sure to be happy when he looks down upon me. I want I'll be able to be happy when he looks down upon me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It was the same with Abraham. Or Abraham. He trusted in God and was faithful to him. And that was credit to his account as righteousness. Amen. You know, 
Abraham thought Abraham knew. He didn't know how, but but he just felt it in his heart that Abi Yahweh was not going to let him kill his son. Amen. But he was going to do it. Yes. For the simple reason that Abi Yahweh asked him to do it. He loved it. See. But God had a ram in the bush for him. He wanted to see would Abraham obey. Did he trust him? See, sometimes we go through things just to, so that you're sure to know that we trust him. I don't care what it is. Sometimes we just got to go through sometimes some dark clouds come over and we got to trust God that, that, that the, the sky is going to be clear. Blue skies are coming. Sometimes we may have to cry at night, but we got to understand that joy will come in the morning. Hallelujah. That there's a season. Yes, it is. Sometimes there's a season. Yes, it is. That we got to go through some trouble. Amen. Amen. It's our test. It's our test. Can we pass the test? See? Oh, oh, the only time you want to be with Yeshua is when you just, oh, oh, everything's going well for you. Everything is doing good for you. Then you want to be with Yeshua. But soon as a storm comes, then you want to deserve him? Where's the trust? Where's the faith? Where is the love? That's it, now. The love. See, where is the love? Yeah. Man says he loves his wife. Wife says he loves her husband. But one of them gets sick, and then the other one departs. Where was the love? Where was the love? While things are well, while things are going good, oh, we can stay together, we can be all right together. Where's the love? Huh? Where's the love? Sometimes we must what? Have some hardship. Hardships in marriage sometimes. And I am. No. Where I come? We've got to know that you're sure he's our husband. And he's with us all the time. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to be part of us. Hallelujah. That's why we got to have the same type of spirit. Amen. That we're not going to depart him. That we want to obey him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He says, be assured then that it is those who live by trusting and being faithful who really who are really the children of Abraham. But when we say we're the children of Abraham, that Abraham was our father, and that, and that Yeshua, that we're following his God, the God of Isaac, Abraham, then we're going to be obedient. We're going to be faithful. We're going to, be, we're going to have the same kind of trust. We're going to have the same kind of faith. And that's what we must have. We must have that faith. Amen. We've got to have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says, Also, the Tanaka, for seeing that God will consider the Gentiles righteous, when they live, in, when they live by trusting and being faithful, told the good news to Abraham in advance by saying, in connection with you, all the goyim will be blessed. Yes. All the goyim, all the foreigners, all those that didn't know Yeshua, are going to be blessed. Yes. Because of the faithfulness and trust that Abraham had. Yes. Amen. They're going to be able to be drafted in because of the trust, having faith that Yeshua, that that Abi Yahweh is quite capable of keeping His word. Having faith. Amen. Having faith. Trusting God. Yes. Trusting in what? For all things. Not just some things. All but things. all things. We must what? Trust Him. We must have the faith. Hallelujah. Because while trust, while having faith in Yeshua, we don't have anything people. 
nothing. Amen. Thank you, Abiyo. He says, in connection with you, all the going will be blessed. So then, those who rely on trusting and being faithful are blessed along with Abraham, who trusted and was faithful. Yes. For everyone who depends on legalistic observance of Torah command lives under a curse. Since it is written, curse is everyone who does not keep on doing everything written in the scroll of Torah. You curse. Amen. Amen. Now see, in this flesh, we cannot live by every word that God commands. Not in the flesh, we can't do it. Amen. Amen. The flesh won't allow. Amen. But see, but when we trust in Yeshua, mm -hmm. that we allow Him to come in and dwell in us, and we dwell in Him, yes. and He lives the life for us. Yes. And by trusting that He's going to live the life for us, then we can make it in. Because yes. then we're living by the Spirit. Amen? We got faith. Amen? We got it all joy to be able to do the commandments of our reality. To live what we are for Hallelujah. He says, Now it is evident that no one comes to be declared righteous by God through legalism, since the person who is righteous will attain life by trusting and being faithful. Then we got to be trusting that God said what he did when he says that, Oh, I love you, I'll be our way, I will obey your commandments, I will obey your statutes, then we allow him to come in when we get baptized in the name. Amen. When we take on the name of Yeshua. Yes. Amen. When we go down in that water, we're trusting. Amen. We're trusting. Yes. Amen. We got faith that God is going to cleanse us and purge us. That He will perfect us. Yes. Amen. See, if we live in being what? In the Spirit. He says, now, the Messiah, excuse me. Furthermore, number 3, 12, furthermore, legalism is not based on trusting and being faithful, but on a misuse of the text that says anyone who does these things will attain life through them. The Messiah redeemed us from the curse pronounced in the Torah by becoming cursed on our behalf. For the Tanakh says, everyone who hangs from a stake comes under a curse. So we know that who was hung by a stake was Yeshua HaMaseah. In other words, he bore our sins. Yes. Amen. Because if we could, if he didn't bear our sin, we, there was no way that we would be able to get rid of our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. There was no way that we could be delivered from our sins, from the wickedness of our ways. Okay. See, so therefore, you sure had to go up there and get on that stake for our sake. He took on the, our sins upon him. Future sin upon him. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the reopt sacrifice. He was the pure sacrifice. He did this for our sakes. So, well, he had no sin. He committed no sin. Amen. And so by trusting Him that He is taking these sins away from us is the only way that we'll be able to make it into the kingdom of God. Because we don't believe and trust that Yeshua took these sins upon us, then we're still carrying the sins ourselves and that no sins shall enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. That's how come we have to go up there and walk what? In the reality. we got to walk in the Spirit. Yes. we got to keep our minds pure. We gotta keep our minds reacting. In other words, we gotta keep our minds holy. Hallelujah. We must be. It's an absolute that we must be a react people and we cannot do it in this flesh of ours. Amen. Amen. We got to trust you sure. Amen. Gotta have faith in him. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. In order to become what one with him. In order to become, become a saint. Saint. He says. Yeshua, the Messiah, did this so that in union with Him, 
the Gentiles might receive the blessing announced to Abraham, so that through trusting and being faithful, we might receive what was promised, namely the Spirit. So by trusting, so we got to what? Receive the Spirit. The word Spirit do we want to receive? We want the Spirit, the Spirit of Yeshua HaMaseya. Yes. We got to receive His Spirit. Because without His Spirit, without we are have to die, we cannot see His face. Amen. Because we didn't trust, we didn't believe that He, he could cleanse us, He could purge us, He could perfect us. All in a twinkling eye, we all will be changed. Amen. Thank you, Elio. Brothers, let me make an analogy from everyday life. When someone swears an oath, no one else can set it aside or add to it. What is he saying here? If I make a promise to you, can't nobody change that promise. You can't, and, and, and my name is I give permission to. Can't nobody change anything. If you make a promise to me, can't nobody change say, well, hey, we're going to do this and do that. Uh -uh. The word is as it stands. If I make a promise to my wife, then it's between me and her, and I, I got to keep that promise. Amen. Yeah, I made a vow to my wife to say, I'll be faithful, I'll be true, I got to keep that promise. She made the same vow to me. Now, can't nobody change that. So you can't nobody change that. Can't nobody break the promise. It's up us. We don't want to break it. it. Amen. If I promise my wife I'm going to be faithful, I got to be faithful. If I'm not faithful, then I've broken the promise. I've broken the vow. Amen. Because that vow does go to God. It goes to the uh, Yeshua. Amen. It goes out to Yahweh. Yes, it does. Amen. But not only am I breaking up, if I become unfaithful to her, then not only am I break, being unfaithful to her, I'm being unfaithful to Abu Yahweh, to Yeshua. Amen. Amen. So, we can't change it. Oh, amen. We don't want to change it. You know, I can't say, oh, well, oh, that girl, she said she'd do this and do that, and I couldn't help myself, and I went along with her. When the girl didn't make me break the vow, I broke it. Right? And that would never happen. If she let some man come up in her life and she said this, and she fall for him, you know, he didn't break the vow. She broke it. Amen. See? And it's the same thing with Yeshua Ham said, because we make a commitment. But when we say that we trust Yeshua, when we trust Abi Yahweh, then we have to keep the vow. And we only keep the vow through the Spirit by Him dwelling in us. Amen. He got to help us keep it. And we have to trust that He will help us. Thank you, Lord. He says, Now the promise were made to Abraham and his seed. And his seed. It doesn't say, and to seeds. As there are so many on the contrary, it speaks of one, and to your seed, to the seed of Abraham. And there's a say to your his seeds. It's a seed. In other words, we gotta go what we want. And this one is the Messiah. It's the Messiah. We gotta trust in the Messiah. We gotta trust in Yeshua. Uh, this is the promise. Here is what I'm saying. The legal part of the Torah, which comes into being 430 years later, does not nullify an oath sworn by God. See, when God made the promise, that's because uh, of Yeshua's appearance and because of what he did and what the thing said, it did not change what God said to Father Abraham. It does not change. Amen. He says, For if the inheritance comes from the legal part of the Torah, it no longer comes from a promise. But God gave it to Abraham through a promise. In other words, it can be kept only through the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we can't keep it in a legalistic term. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's through the Spirit. 
to do it out. So then, why the legal power of the Torah? It was added in order to create transgression until the coming of the seed about whom the promise has been made. Moreover, it was handed down through angels and a mediator. Now a mediator implies more than one, but God is one. God is the only one that is quite as capable of keeping promises. Amen. He will do exactly as he says. Amen. Amen. Now we can speak the promise that oh yeah, I you can go to say, well I'm gonna, if I make a promise, I'm gonna keep it. But if you die, or if you get locked up, you get sick, and for some reason you keep the promise, then you don't lie. Said the law is here. See. It's not by be by the will of God. That's the only way that we can do anything is by the will of the Lord. How come he tells us, you know? So if it be the Lord's will, then I'll do such and such thing. He said, let our yeas be yeas and our nays be nays. In other words, let us be sure on the things that we can say and on the that we can do. Amen. He says, does this mean that the legal part of the Torah stands in opposition to God's promise? Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. You know, no. It's all one. It's all in connection. Why? Because everything is done through the Spirit. It's done through holiness. It's done through reality. We live by the Spirit. We live in the Spirit. We are, have to become what? Spiritual beings. Amen. He says, for if the legal part of the Torah, which God gave, had in itself the power to give life, then righteousness really would have come by legalistic following such a Torah. But well, we know that, you know, legalistic people can't do it. People were breaking it. That's right. They do it Amen. In the they might strive to do it, okay. but they couldn't do it. Amen. So everything that we do, if we have to do it what? In the Spirit, by the Spirit, and through the Spirit. That's, it. That's how come we have, must have the react in us. It's so important. That we have the react, the Holy Ghost in us. That we live and we follow, it's directed. Because you sure it's not going to make us do anything. We have to want to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to want to obey the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, you don't ride the Holy Spirit. Because I know like a lot of times, the react can tell the people about the seven day Sabbath. But instead of keeping the seven day Sabbath, they override the Spirit of God. And they go there and they'll say, well, you know, everybody else in church is keeping Sunday. And, you know, all my friends are in Sunday churches and the first day church and all of this. And I, I just want to be with my friends and stuff like that. Well, you can be with your friends. And then you find yourself where? In hell. You find yourself in that burning hell. Amen. The sin will carry us to hell. Disobedience to Torah. Being disobedient to the Tanaka will put us in that burning hell. And that's the truth. That's a fact. Amen. And I'm telling you, you don't want to go to that burning hell. No. We have family, we have friends, you know, uh, people that we know, but we don't see nobody go to hell. And so we tell them the truth. They get mad, they get angry. And that's fine too. But we have to what? Wash our hands. You gotta wash your hands. Amen. Amen. Stand on the word. Stand on God's truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says. But instead, the tonight just shuts up everything under sin. So that what has been promised might be given on the basis of Yeshua the Messiah, trusting faithfulness to those who continue to be trusting and faithful. Notice, where does the blessing come from? How does it come about? By us being what trusting and faithful. By being trusting and faithful, what is he saying? That we must be what obedient to him. Amen. To his word. We're not trying to change his word. 
Amen. We obey it line by line and precept upon precept. Why? From our heart. Why? Because we love Yeshua. We're not doing it from a legalistic term, you know, doing it in the flesh, but through the spirit of Yeshua Hamasaiah. Because the flesh, this thing in flesh of ours, does not want to be well obedient to the word of God. It does not want to do it. No, no. Amen. It does not want to obey. Amen. Amen. It does not want to live real. Amen. Amen. And it won't. Sure. Amen. It won't live real. Amen. Not on its own. It takes the power of Yeshua Hamasaiah dwelling in us and we dwell in him. Yes, that we can live real. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. He says, Now, before the time for this trust and faithfulness came, we were imprisoned in subjection to the system, which results, which results from perverting the Torah into legalism. Kept under guard until its yet to come trust and faithfulness would be revealed. See? Couldn't do it. You are trying to do it legalistically. Legalistically observing Torah. Legalistically observing Sabbath. Legalistically, you know, doing the Rosh HaKadosh, you know, doing everything legalist, but not in the spirit. Observing the feast days, you know, legalistically, but not in the spirit. Amen. You see, and when we're not in the spirit, we don't have the heart, we don't have the love to do things correctly. Amen. Amen. When we're not in the spirit, we cannot do it. Amen. You're just doing everything, oh, in form and in fashion. That's the best way to put it, in form and in fashion. Not doing it from the heart. Amen. If you don't do it from the heart, then it's no good. You know, I tell my wife all the time, I say, well, you know, sometimes she says, I don't feel like this. I say, if you don't feel like this, don't cook because it's not coming from your heart. Don't cook because you, you just got to cook. We can get us a sandwich, a bowl of cereal or something else. Get us some uh, cornbread and buttermilk and we'll be all right. Amen. Don't cook. Amen. I, I'll be all right. You ain't got to cook. Amen. Amen. Because if, if she cook it and not in the heart and not in the right spirit, it's going to be a mess. Amen. You know, it's going to be a mess. You know, a lot of times, sometimes you say, well, why don't you cook? Sometimes I don't feel like cooking. And if I cook it and it's not in the spirit, and I don't feel like cooking, it's going to be a mess. Amen. Why? Because my heart is not in it. Don't like it. Amen. And so a lot of times, people, they did not have the reality, did not, and they didn't have the, the earlier Hebrews did not have the, the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the Riyah HaKadosh, and they were observing these feast days, and they were doing things it was in a legalistic manner because they had to, and it was fake. See, they were trying to corrupt their sin. They were pretending that they were all of this and all of that, but they were liars. They were thieves. They were whoremongers. They were walking in evil. Amen. But they had this cover. They had this pretense. Because they had to show the world that they were what? Being legalistic Hebrews. They were obeying the law. They were making a big show. Yeah. That's why a lot of times you saw a lot of when it when had came time to fast, they were making a, a big show of fasting. Oh, I'm fasting, I'm doing all of this, I'm doing all of that. They were doing it from a legalistic term. They did not do it in the spirit. Even when Yeshua was observing the man in the, the two men in the synagogue, one was sitting up there praying and saying, Oh Lord, I'm so happy, I'm not like this sinner. Oh, he was just beating his chest and talking about how wonderful he is and how he obeys all the law, how he obeys all the commandments, all the statutes. And he wasn't like that poor sinner over there. He was thinking that he was all of this and all of that. And then here was the sinner, had his head down. You know, and he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to the Lord. And he said, oh, I'm the support sinner, and I need your help, Lord. And God heard. And God heard that prayer. Yes, he did. More honor. See. More. Because why? Because he was being truthful. He was being faithful. Hallelujah. 
He was trusting that God could come in and help him and cleanse him and help him out of the situation that he was in. And see, that's why we have to be truthful. We have to be faithful. We have to trust God and understand that He sure can help us in our situations. That He can bring us out. He's a God that can reach way down. There's no, there's no debt that He can't reach. I don't care how, how we look upon ourselves, how low that we think of ourselves, or how much evil we think that we've done. If we cry out to God, God can come in and save us and deliver us from ourselves, from our wicked ways. He can cleanse us and purge us. Amen. See, but we've got to trust His sure and understand who He is. Thank you, Lord. Accordingly, the Torah functioned as a custodian until the Messiah came, so that we might work be declared righteous on the grounds of trusting and being faithful. But now that the time for this trust and faithfulness has come, we are no longer under a custodian. Now, we're no longer under Torah, but we're under Yeshua, we're under the yes. Spirit of God. And so we got to do and hear Yeshua. And he tells us that he did not what come to break the commandments or the statutes, but he comes to fulfill them. And it's being fulfilled right now, even as we speak. Amen. By the changes, the preparation for our coming together with him as one. See? In the spirit. Because he told us time and time again that those that worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. He didn't say in legalistic ways. No, no. But he said in spirit and in truth. Now what does in spirit and truth imply? It implies then that because of the words that are spoken in Torah, that we trust that God, that our Yahweh, can fulfill his word, then we and the things that pleases him are written in Torah, then we want to do the things that pleases him from our heart. Yes. Not from a legalistic standpoint. Uh, not from a fleshly standpoint. Come on. See, our game is Yeshua. Hallelujah. Our love is about Yeshua. I'm saying it's about Abba Yahweh. It's about the love that He has for us. We know that He loves us. Yes. And that He's helping us to work, spend eternity with Him when we obey Him. See, when we obey Him, we're saying, Lord, your way is right. Yes. I trust your way. Help me to do it your way. Help me to do it according to your perspective, Abba yes. Yahweh. I see the pathway. And the pathway is the word of God, leading us into what? Truth. Leading us to worship Him in what? Spirit and in truth. Okay. And that's how we become what one with God. Now, 26. For in union with Messiah, you are all children of God through this trusting faithfulness. What? Wait a minute. We are all become one in God, in the Messiah. By our trust and faithfulness. We become the saints. Our all one. Lord have mercy. Just by trusting, because we're going to obey, we're going to worship, we're going to praise God in the way that He so richly deserves to be praised and be glorified. We are what? One now with the Messiah. Yes. He says, because as many of you as were immersed into the Messiah, or in other words, being baptized into the Messiah, as He likes to say, but immersed. Not the sprinkling of water, but being immersed. In other words, we have to go under the water as Messiah was baptized by Yukana. Amen. The merger. We have to be immersed in the water. So now we have become, we're doing things the same way as he did. And we're becoming one with him 
in what? In the act, in the spirit. Yes. In the spirit of God. He says, because many of you were immer immersed into the Messiah, have clothed yourself with the Messiah. In other words, we have put on the Messiah. We have be in clothing. Amen. 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 We, in other words, we were dwelling in him. Amen. We, we're dwelling in him. We're inside him. We're going to put him on. Amen. So now we're walking as he walked. We're talking as he talked. We're living as he lived. We, the, the, the filth is what being cleansed away from us. It's being purged. We're being purged. We're coming more pure, of a pure mind, of a pure thought, of a pure heart, of a pure love. He says, in whom there is neither Jew nor Gentile. See, in the Messiah, there's no Jew, no Hebrew, no Jew, Gentile. Just one people. Neither slave nor free man. You know, we just want neither slave nor free. Neither male nor female. You see, if there's neither male nor female in the Messiah, then it is the one spirit. Then when you say that women cannot be preachers, not be preachers or be prophetess or be apostles, you're right, because not a woman. Because not as a man. In the spirit. Because when we're in the spirit, we're one. That's right. With the Messiah. With the Messiah. So whether they be male or female, pastors, prophets, apostles, or bishops, as long as they're in the spirit, then their sexuality does not come into play. Amen. Amen. I, you know, either male or female. He said neither male nor female. Amen. Now when Paul or Shua said, I suffer a woman not to preach. Okay, a woman can't preach in the flesh. Neither can a man preach in the flesh. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because when we preach and teach, we got to be what? In the spirit of God. Because we have what we want in Messiah. So you're going to tell God that he can't preach. You're going to tell Yeshua that he can't preach. Huh? No, sir. Is that what you're trying to say? Because let me get an understanding. Because we're either going to be one with God or we're not. We're going to be one with Yeshua. Or we're not. Amen. Because he says there's neither male nor female. Then what did you say? Yes. Whose report are you going to believe? Yeshua. Sure. I believe the report of Yeshua. Sure. I trust in Yeshua. Sure. I trust in the things that he tells me. I trust in Torah. I trust in the Word. You can say, well, no, you got the wrong understanding. Okay, then I have the wrong understanding according to your thought, your ways, your fleshly mind. That's right. Yeah. But I gotta walk in the spirit. Yes, I gotta walk in the reality. You gotta walk in the reality. You gotta walk in the spirit. You gotta become one in God. You gotta become one in the Messiah. You gotta become what? One. Arms got to come on as a body of Yeshua. One. Body of one. One. Thank you, I'll be our way. Neither male nor female, for in union with Messiah, Yeshua, you are all. One. You said you all are, are one. So you said the female, the male are all one. So who do you want? You gonna argue with that? Huh? They're one. You say the Messiah, you can't preach Messiah? 
We walk in the spirit. Walk in the new reality. So, if a woman that's in the spirit comes to tell you something that God says, you say you won't receive what God says? That's up to you. That's your choice. But then, who has bewitched you? Huh? Who has put a spell on you that you cannot receive? The teachings that come from a, the spirit that's in a female body. The Holy Spirit. Who has bewitched you? Pray. Thank you, I'll be away. Also, and you belong to the Messiah, you are a seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. So now we see here they spoke to he speak to both male and female. He's speaking to both slave and free man. And don't care how much money you got or how poor you are. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, he said, I'm speaking to y'all. All, all of you that want to be saints, all of you that want to make it to the kingdom of God, I give you the opportunity. But you must come what? In the spirit. You must live by the spirit, must live in reality. Yes. You must be baptized or be immersed in the spirit of God. In the spirit of Yeshua Hamasel. It's, it's not an iffy. Amen. Only one way into the kingdom of God, and that's through this, it's through this holy word. It's through his spirit. You got to live in the spirit. You know who says something this evening that will help us make it to the kingdom of God. Amen. And I pray that we take heed and live, react, live a holy life. Yes. Amen. Because he sure loves each and every one of us. Yes. Whether you're saved or not saved, he still loves you. Yes. But if you're not saved, you gotta get saved. You gotta become the, you gotta get delivered. And if you are delivered, you gotta stay delivered. We gotta stay delivered. We gotta do the Holy Spirit, we gotta do the Akadash, we gotta keep the Akadash. If we put on the Messiah, we gotta keep we gotta stay close in the Messiah, in other words. We gotta allow him to dwell in us, and we dwell in him. We put him on. So if we put him on, then we're going to do the things that's going to be pleasing to him. He already knows. So the only thing we got to do is just walk in the footsteps and be obedient and subject to the word of God. And we want to say that we love you. Amen. Now we invite you to attend services with us. We have services on Friday evening, the beginning of the Sabbath day at 6 p.m. And then we have service on Sabbath day, Saturday morning, 6 p.m. I mean, uh, 11 a.m., excuse me, 11 a.m. on Saturday morning, and 6 p.m. on Friday evening, Sabbath day. Amen. Uh, we're located at 4935 U.S. Highway 84, Frisco City, Alabama, 36445. If you care to write us, if you want to send in donations, offering to the eyes, whatever you want to do, amen. You just want to write us, you want some uh, advice, or you want to talk about us, or you want to be in agreement with us, however, not however, way you want, whatever you want to say, you may write us. Uh, we're Pure Gospel, Jesus Christ, Miss Sunday Community. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 824, Monroeville, Alabama, 36461. 36461. Amen. Also, if you care to uh, call us, you may call us at 251-593-3671 or 251-593-3683. We also want you to have uh, Bible studies in your home. Amen. Please have Bible study. Somebody lead the family in Bible study. Start at the book of Brisha, which is Genesis, and go all the way through to Revelations. Amen. And I always pray and ask the sure to lead you, guide you, and to teach you, instruct you. Don't go by your own understanding. But allow, I be Yahweh, allow you sure to come in and instruct you. He said, I'll teach my people. I'll teach you. You don't have no need for man to teach you. He said, I'll teach you. 
and I'm trusting you should. And he will. He will, he, he will love you and teach you. He wants you to know about it. He doesn't want to see any of us going to that burning hell. Please have Bible study. Yes, and join us in prayer. We have prayer every evening at 6 and 9 p.m. Amen. That's how we will try to have prayer every evening at 6 and 9 p.m. So please join us in prayer. Those are times to bombard the kingdom of God, to bombard Yeshua HaMashiach with some specific times He's given us. Pray throughout the day or pray whatever time that you normally pray also. But please just join us in prayer. Please. The more of us are bombarded and, and, you know, put our prayers and supplications to Him, the more He likes He's going to move. Amen. Because He hears the prayers of, his, of the saints. It's the prayers of the saints. Amen. Prayers of the sinners do not hear. If you're a sinner and want to pray, you got to first repent of all your sins, all your weakness, and say, hey, tell God, hey, I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. Then you hear your prayer and begin to make changes in your life for you. To yeah. come to Him while He's calling. While He still has His hands stretched out to us. Call on Him. Amen. Call time coming. Time's coming. He's coming soon. And we can't be getting ready. We got to be ready, people. We must be ready. So please, and pray. Also, uh, we do have the PGJCM uh, discount casket store and Green Burial Cemetery. You can give the call at 251-593-8336. We're located at 4935. Uh, U.S. Highway 84, Christmas City, Alabama, 36445. Uh, please call, make an appointment. If you, you know you want to get a cash at discount prices, you, we have uh, brochures you can order from. We you can see some of the caskets here. Uh, we'll have one that you like, and we can order for you and get it to the you know, home of your choice. Amen. So, we want to. Thank you, amen. And if you have questions, you know, about green burial, natural burial, amen, it's only $777 for your grave and, and burial, amen. $777. No casket, no embalming, or vault, I need. Amen. But we're going to uh, detail with you. Give us a call, make an appointment. We want to say that we love you in the name of Yeshua. We do say, amen, amen. Shalom to you. Hold it, Barack. Amen. Amen. In your hand, Pastor.